Finally, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the former governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Bello, has not been remanded into uh, EFCC custody till December 10, 2024, when his case will be heard again in court. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to watch this particular video. Then, before I come back to say the little things I have to say. <laughs> So welcome back ladies and gentlemen. That short clip you just saw is a video of the EFCC taking the former governor of Koki State, Yahaya Bello, to their custody as ordered by the court because his case has been adjourned to 10th of December. So before that very 10th of December, he has to be or to remain in EFCC custody and that is what why you could see in that short clip where they were putting him in that vehicle which the letter drove off. And some people were there protesting why they have to take him, where are they taking him to? And I consider those part of the bad eggs in this country because maybe they must have, you know, benefited one or two from, you know, you understand the country that we are. We don't need to spell everything. So ladies and gentlemen, let me just dive us straight into the details of this particular update. Now I come breaking court remand former Kugi governor Yahaya Bello in EFCC custody till December 10. 2024. Today, being November 27, 2024, this news is coming. Bello, who was arraigned at the FCT High Court on Wednesday, had asked his rascally followers and aides to leave the courtroom to ensure sanity. The Federal High Court in Abuja has adjoined the trial of former Kogi State Governor Yahaya Bello to December 10, while remanding him in the custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The EFCC had also opposed his bail application in court on Wednesday. Yahaya Bello had earlier pleaded not guilty to the sustained count charges brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission at the Federal High Court, Abuja. His case was adjourned to December 10 for the reading of his bail application. He is to remain with the EFCC, Sahara Reporters' Land. The fraud trial involving Yahaya Bello had become chaotic on Wednesday morning when a crowd of his supporters stormed the courtroom. Bello, who was arraigned at the FCT High Court on Wednesday, had asked his rascally followers and aides to leave the courtroom to ensure sanity. Thereafter, Justice Miriam Anne Anemi took the plea of the former governor and two others. Meanwhile, Kemi Pinheru San led the federal government's legal team for the arraignment. Why Joseph Bodunde Dawuda San led the legal team for the former governor in the sustained count charges. Sahara reporters reported earlier that Yahaya Bello was brought to court around 8.50 a.m. on Wednesday. Bello, who served as governor from 2016 to 2023, faces charges related to, the related to the mismanagement of state funds, as well as accusation of embezzlement and abuse of office. Earlier in November, Sahara reporters reported that the EFCC had filed fresh charges against former governor Bello, accusing him of 110 billion naira fraud. The EFCC had initially filed 19 charges against the former Kogi governor, along with his nephew Ali Bello, Dawuda Suleiman, and Abdul Salam Hudu for money laundering offenses, <laughs> amounting to 80 billion 246 million 470,088 naira 88 kobo. In the fresh charges dated September 25, the total amount involved is 110 billion 446 million 470,089 kobo. The Federal Capital Territory High Court, sitting in Maitama, Abuja, had dismissed the oral bail applications of Abdul Salam, Hudu, and Uma Oriko, who are co who are co-defendants of Yahaya Bello in the 110.4 billion fraud case preferred again preferred again them by the EFCC. Now ladies and gentlemen, in this case I am so happy as Nigerian government has finally decided to take action in regards to the case of this former governor of Kogi State from 2016 to 2023, the person of Yahaya Bello for the cases which numerous count charges which the EFCC, you know, labeled against him. 
for we all know that since uh, May, if I'm not mistaken, I'll be April, that is when, you know, this case was called upon. But uh, it seems Nigerian government, we are actually joking and they didn't want to do anything about it. But because of so much pressure that, uh, you know, we have mounted, uh, people have been mounted on media and so all of those other, and so others. I believe that is why they now want to shamefully begin to take action concerning this case. And this is why I tell you that media has power. The people have power, just that the people of this country, which are the citizens, they have not realized how powerful they are in this country. You see, sometimes there are so many crimes, all the crimes you see now uh, that uh, these governors, uh, past governors and all of the House of Rep members, all of them, they are committing and uh, they are being probed. It is because of the people who are talking about it. Had it been nobody is talking about them, you will see that all these crimes will be swept into the carpet and nobody can do anything about it. That is why it is good for you people, for the citizens of this country to start coming up and speak out for what is right. You need to challenge the government whenever you see they are doing something unlawful, something illegal against the constitution. So whenever you see them mismanaging the resources of the country, whenever you see that they are not leading appropriately, they are not giving accountabilities and they are not taking responsibilities as leaders, it is the duty of the citizens to complain and complain bitterly so that this government they will swing into action. I believe because of the complaint of the citizens, so many political activists, activists, advocates and all of that, that is why they finally decided to hearken to the voice of the people and uh, do what is needed to be done in this case of Yahya Bello. And I pray that as they have started, let it not be, you know, let them not do their wuru magu magu as we all know in this country that it is. I just pray that justice should prevail as I have always advocated for. We can, this you can also attest on how powerful the citizens are by what happened at the, the, in the case of those children that we are, those minors that we arraigned in court because they involved in the August end bad governance protest. You see, it is because everybody, the people, now came out to put their mouth in it, get involved. That is why the government they feel so embarrassed and they now have to do the needful and release those children and drop all the treasonable, uh, uh, treasonable accounts and treasonable felonies count which they charge those children and discharge them mm -hmm. and acquitted them. Had there been nobody got involved in that case, those children will be executed by Nigerian government. I am telling you, this is the power of the people. And at this moment, I begin to urge every Nigerian to begin to realize that they have power more than these politicians. So we should begin to exercise our constitutional right as citizens of this country. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I remain Onyachuku Mese, the proud anchor of this very YouTube channel, Pendon TV. Stay blessed and always promote justice. Let justice prevail over injustice.